Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to the Beginning C Sharp with Unity screencast series. In this episode, you'll be introduced to the idea of abstract classes. Abstract classes are a way of defining behavior for subclasses without defining the entire class. Think of it, you may have many different types of enemies in your game, and you may want all these enemies to share the same code, yet the parent class may not know how that code should be implemented. For instance, you may have a monster class, which is the parent class for both your Sasquatch enemies and your shark enemies. Both monsters should have hit points, the ability to take damage, as well as a move method. Managing the hit points in a parent class is relatively straightforward. If the enemy takes more damage than their hit points, they will die. Issues arrive when we run into the move method. The sharks swim, whereas the Sasquatches run. It doesn't make sense to have the parent class implement those methods, Rather, that's the job for the child classes. Yet, you want all monsters to be able to move, so you want to keep that method in place. There's also another problem. You actually don't want there to be instances of the monster class. The monster class is meant to be guidelines for all the child classes. It's too generic to be used. This is where you have the idea of abstract classes. An abstract class acts as a template for its subclasses. You can provide code in it, that the subclasses can inherit, but you can also designate methods that must be implemented in the child classes. In short, an abstract class is only meant as a guide. It's never meant to be instanced. To create an abstract class, you designate the class as abstract using the abstract keyword. At this point, no instances of the class can be created, only subclasses. If you try to instance an abstract class, you'll receive a compile error. Next, you can build the class as you normally would. When you run into a method that you want only subclasses to implement, you mark the method also as being abstract. At this point, you don't provide a method block. Rather, you just define the method header followed by a semicolon. A subclass must now derive from the abstract class. Mind you, this subclass can also be abstract and its subclasses can be abstract, but at some point, you must have a concrete class that implements these abstract methods. To make a subclass of an abstract class, you inherit from it, and then you must override the abstract methods. Let's see it in action. To get started working with abstract classes, I'm going to create a new monodevelop class, and we'll simply call this Shapes. Now, throughout the series, I've been creating my own classes for say individual objects, but for the sake of simplicity, we're just gonna do it all within this one C-sharp class. Okay, here is our mono develop script. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna add our new classes right above this. Now, the very first thing we'll do is create an abstract class called shape. So we use the keyword abstract, and then we simply call it shape like so. Okay, great. Now we want this shape class to have a simple method, which is to get the perimeter of the shape. So what I'm gonna do is declare this as public first. Now I'm gonna have this be abstract. And this will be a type of double and it's returned get perimeter. And this is it, this is the entire class. Now, if I try to actually create this class, Let's see what happens. You can see right away we get this squiggly. It says cannot create instance of an abstract class. So right away we know we can't access them. Okay, so we have our shape class and the next thing we want to do is create subclasses of it. I want to create a rectangle shape and I also want to create a triangle shape. First, let's do the rectangle. Here you can see we're making this a subclass of shape. And right away, you can see we, we get this squiggle here. And it says, rectangle does not implement inherited abstract member shape get perimeter. So we need to implement this method. But before we do that, we have to do some setup as well. This should be familiar to you. All we're doing is creating a constructor 
we're passing in a couple of doubles and then we're setting up our instance variables. Okay, awesome. Now we want to actually implement our get perimeter method. We do this by setting this public, so we're matching the access modifier, designate this as an override, and then we can simply put in get perimeter here. You can see here we got a not implemented exception, and an exception is a way of throwing errors inside of C Sharp. We won't cover exceptions in this series, but at the very end, I'll give a very brief overview of them. Okay, all this does is add the width and the length and multiplies it by two and returns that value. And that is our rectangle shape. And you can see the error has gone away. And this class is now implementing this abstract class shape. Let's create another class. Here you see we're creating a triangle class and we're setting up three sides, side A, side B, and side C. You can also notice that we're putting this all on just one line versus having them one at a time over here. Okay, this triangle is very much the same like this rectangle. What we're doing is we're setting up three different instance variables for the sides. We're then passing them into the constructor and for the get perimeter, we just simply add them all together. Okay, now that we have our two shapes, let's instance them in our new behavior script. Okay, in our onDisable method, I'm creating a rectangle and I'm creating a triangle. And now what I wanna do is I wanna loop through both of these and get their perimeter. And the way we wanna do this is we wanna put it into an array. So here's the question is how do we do that? Because these are two different types. So we have a rectangle and we have a triangle. Can you think of a common type that both of these share? Well, both of these are instances of, that's right, the shape class. So what we can do is create a shape array. Here we're gonna call this shapes and we're gonna create a new array of shapes. So all this line of code is saying is that I want to contain a, an array of shapes and inside of this array of shapes, there's going to be a rectangle and a triangle. At no point are we ever instancing a shape because we can't instance a shape. It's an abstract class, but we can define collections like arrays to hold items of shapes. And then we know that both of these objects have similar methods because they're instances of shapes. Now let's loop through these. Now we're looping through the shapes and we're calling the get perimeter method on each shape, which is actually going to be first a rectangle and then the second one will be a triangle. What you're seeing here is an instance of polymorphism and we'll be covering polymorphism later in this series, but this should give you a real sense of the power behind object-oriented programming. One other thing, you can see here we're in shape CS but our public class is called new behavior script. I'm just gonna make, we'll just call this shapes to match it up with the name. Okay, so here we are with back in Unity again. You can see we have our shape class. I'm gonna select our cube here and we're going to remove this demo script and we're going to add our shapes. Now you can see we have our shape script on there. I'm gonna run the game open up the console, and now let's disable the cube. You can see it loops through both those shapes and prints out 40, and it also prints out six, which is exactly as we would expect. That's it for this screencast, but as always, we like to end off with a challenge. 
In your challenge, I want you to create an abstract class for a vehicle. It should have an abstract increase speed method. There should be a car class and a tank class. The increase speed method in the car class should go vroom, and for the tank class, it should go rumble. Well, I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, in your challenge, I gave you the task of creating a vehicle, and I want you to create a car class and a tank class based off of that vehicle. And I want you to have an abstract method called increase speed. So let's do this now. I'm going to create a new C Sharp script. We'll call this vehicles and we'll do everything within here. Okay, so here is our script. Very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new abstract class. We'll call this vehicle. And we're going to create a public abstract method called increase speed. And that's it. Next, we'll create a tank class. It's going to implement the increase speed method, so we need to override that. And we'll simply print out a message. We're going to do the same for the car class as well. Okay, with both those in place, we're going to put our code in on disable like we've been through, doing throughout this series. And we're going to create a vehicle array. Here's our array. It contains a new tank and a new car. Okay, now let's loop through these. And we'll call the increase speed on them. Back in Unity, I'm going to select the cube. We're going to remove our enemy script from that. And we're going to just simply drag our vehicle script on here. And let's run this. Here with the console open, we're going to disable the cube, and we have rumble, rumble, and vroom, vroom.